Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, we've only got 20 minutes, so I'm going to assume that everybody knows everything about Sophie. <laughs> quite, quite simply, she's one of the most prolific entertainment executives in the world, having made defining moves at um, Hit, Sky, um, and now Endemore Shine, and the BBC as well, I think, along the way. Yep, pretty um, much everywhere. The, the group is one of the uh, mo most progressive drama businesses in the world. It currently has 80 shows on air across 15 different territories, 37 of which are in English-speaking territories. Uh, and new scripted launches were up 39% from 2016, with 32 titles making their debut across the year. The titles, are, only the key titles include Black Mirror, Turn Up Charlie, Humans, Troy, Good Karma Hospital, Grandchester, Tin Star, Dark, Cathedral of the Sea, Harem, Bron and Nikki Jam. So, um, apart from asking Sophie what she does in her spare time, which I imagine is not um, prolific, uh, we should maybe dive straight in and, and talk a little bit about how the world is, seems to be opening up to drama. We, we see brands coming out of, of every market, not just the US and the, and the UK. What has caused this, um, th th this sort of diverse hotbed of creativity and, 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 and how are you uh, engaging with it? So we're very fortunate, good afternoon everybody, we're very fortunate to actually have a presence in 23 countries around the world. So we produce drama in 16 of them, but we actually have production entities in 23. Um, I, I think the UK and the Americans have always dominated the drama industry, mainly because the English lang language, whether you like it or not, travels the furthest and the fastest. However, I think you look at the generation now who've grown up via uh, Facebook, social media, uh, whatever, and they're a global, they're a, even if they're a kid based in London or Paris or, or Israel, they, they're connected to the world. And so ultimately, like we all should have been if we didn't have blinkers being Anglo-Saxon and not liking to read subtitles, we are all searching for shows that have just a really great story to tell. And I think what, what I really love about our kind of mad, uh, complicated octopus of a business is that it's like being involved in the largest R&D uh, for both scripted and non-scripted business that there is where a, a good idea can literally come from anywhere. Can you give us some context about those different markets? Because you're in everywhere from Latin America to Brazil to, 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 to another 20 one, um, <laughs> perhaps give us a, a sense of what's working in those markets and how you're developing differently in, in each of the different territories. Well, the, the big guns are still blazing in the UK where we're fortunate to have, you know, Peaky, which has become this enormous global hit. Um, but equally, I think it's really fascinating to see what we're doing in somewhere like Mexico where we've just uh, formed a merger with a company called Boomdog. So we do El Vato for Telemundo and Nicky Jam, which if you don't know is a reggaeton hero. Uh, and we're doing a big drama with him. Uh, and also, you know, we cross literally all over the world. We, we go from Scandi Noir, where we've been obviously incredibly successful with the bridge, and I'll talk a bit about that later, but, but also to Israel. And I th I'm not sure whether anybody had a chance to see the screening of Harem, but um, I'm delighted to say today that uh, Rechette have announced that they will be commissioning a second season. It's, um, it, it, it they like it. <laughs> it, it it's, it's this massive entre, entrepreneurial spirit in, in, in the Israeli drama business, and, and, and that sits in a slate of programs that, that really run the gamut. When you see a show like that, what, what's, what's the ambition for it, and, and what, what do you take away from it in terms of what it's contributing to the group? Well, uh, we're, we're about supporting our creative visionaries, really do the best work that they want to do around the world and the benefits of being such an enormous group with really strong ties from France to Italy to wherever is that we're able to make things happen really quickly. You know, we have the marvelous and indomitable Kathy Payne who leads our Endemol Shine International, who's the queen of every single co-pro and co-financing a deal you could possibly want. And so it's really working with the local heads uh, in every country to work out what's in their development slate and what, do we, what, what are the stories that are going to ultimately resonate with other audiences because ultimately a group like ours is all about how we travel 
um, shows from one country to another. And, and you know, the Israelis are just brilliant because talk about working with small budgets, but they are super creative. And we're really excited because we've got our first Israeli adaptation uh, in, at Fox in the US. So it's pilot season at the moment. So hopefully what the Israeli version was Nevsu and uh, it's called Our People Now. And it's been made with uh, Lee Daniels of Empire fame. So we have high hopes that that could be our first one on network by that route. Cool. Let's talk a little bit about the search for talent. You know, clearly, sort of scripted remains buoyant. The, the, the industry is very, very healthy, but I imagine the challenge is, is finding the right people to make the right shows, getting those projects and getting them first. What is the job that needs to be done there, and, and, and how are you sort of meeting that challenge of making sure you do discover the next big thing? Uh, well, that's the advantage of having four and a half thousand people around the world. We've got a lot of scouts looking for great new talent. Um, I'd also challenge the buyers, and I was a buyer for a very long time too, is to be braver about giving new talent a break. Because we, we do quite a lot of young talent initiatives, particularly with writers. We've got one with Endable Shine Studios Israel. Uh, we've just set up with Kudos North in Manchester to have a writing um, kind of group there. But ultimately, and we work very closely with the National Film and TV School in the UK as well, but ultimately we need to um, adopt this young talent and get them into TV series where they can be umbrellaed. And, and I was sitting in the women's session early on this morning. The, the role of showrunner doesn't really exist outside of the US. So we need those auteurs where we, we absolutely cherish and champion their work, but we need them to share a bit. Otherwise, we're not going to get the gen young generation. And what are you doing in that space? It, it, have you got showrunner room, writer's room initiatives? How, how do you ha actually bring them on with a sort of a syllabus for development, I suppose? Um, well, the advantage of doing episodic series, particularly if it's an established series, is that you can slot young directors, young writers into a run. Um, but that, that doesn't happen all the time. And you, you have a hard job convincing your buyer that you should let risk, particularly if they're spending you know, several million euros or pounds an episode. Why, why should they put it in the hands of a, a young thing? But um, we've got to do more of that. Because there's so much drama going on that you know the the, the caliber of the, the top writers, top directors are busy all the time, uh, and people are waiting up to three years to get some shows up and running. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about the sort of adaptation ad adaptations that you've um, taken into different markets. You know, from 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 the bridge to to humans. What has been the experience of de of developing some of those franchise across different countries, and what do you sort of take away from from the experience? I think at the heart, and the bridge is, in, or Bron, as it is in Sweden, is, is probably one of the most unique adaptations in the drama world. We, we just announced our fifth adaptation, which is between uh, Indonesia and Malaysia, or Singapore, one of those anyway. So there's another bridge going on there, uh, which is our first Asian drama, actually, which will be absolutely fascinating. But I think the key to any adaptation, and Nicolas and the team here in France did a great job on uh, the French version of The Fall, which is Un Soup Connable, uh, which we're doing for TF1, where they, they've taken the kind of heart of the show and the characters, but have very cleverly made it relevant and real to the local French audience. And I think the heart of a great adaptation um, is to make sure that you stay true to its core, but you allow it to breathe with all the natural kind of traditions or characteristics. Um, tell me about Utopia. That was a deal that was announced last week with Amazon Studios. What, what, what does that say about the company and where you're going next? So Utopia is a show that's very, very close to me, because actually it started off when I was at Sky, and it was an in-house competition that I gave to the channel teams that they too could be creative. We didn't have to take everything from independent producers, which of course I now have totally the opposite view. Um, and um, basically three on the creative team came up with it. We didn't have a writing team, so we formed a venture with Kudos. 
and then the rest is history. And um, there's been an adaptation in the works in the US for a very long time. Gillian Fling, who is the writer and author of Gone Girl, came on board to write these amazing scripts and again has taken them in a, in a different direction to the British show. And we were totally delighted when Amazon picked it all up last week. Just sort of uh, on, on doing deals with, with, with SVOD, you, 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 you have a, a portfolio of shows that I think it's fair to say have got an independent spirit. They're sort of fairly progressive, fairly, fairly edgy sh shows to, to, to a great extent. Um, and that I suppose the temptation developing drama these days is to do a deal with an SVOD and to get that show bought out or not, or keep the rights and, and, and own it in perpetuity. Where do you see that all going? Um, are, 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 you, are you and do you think the business is increasingly going to be about one relationship with, with, with the SVOD platforms and another relationship with a different style of, of drama with broadcast partners? And how is that balance going to change over the next few years? Um, I, I think, well, as, an, as a real independent, with 120 independent production companies, we're, we're very agnostic about who our customers are. But I, I think the biggest trick is actually matching that idea with the right partner, because not every show will work for everybody. And, you know, as a buyer, one was sick to death of people coming and pitching you shows that obviously weren't going to run on your platform. And I think it's really important to have a look at it through buyers' eyes and see if you can match. Is that demo right? Is, have they got something similar? I mean, put a little bit more science into it. There is no doubt that it has to all start for the idea, but how you pitch it and where you place it, is, is, that's where the maths come in. Now, I know you have a second clip. On, of, of humans. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that show, because that was, that was a, an, another defining show for, for, for Channel 4 and um, Hulu in the... In the was Amazon. Amazon. Um, uh, where is that project at, and, and, and what can we expect to see f from it going forward? Well, humans is a really interesting thing, because that wasn't an original idea, but a, uh, a show that we picked up from Sweden, where it's been, it had been running on SVT. Uh, again, adapted by Derek Wax at Wild Mercury, and it's a co-pro between Channel 4, AMC, and Amazon, so there's a lot of parents in that. Uh, it's in its third season, and it launches any minute now on Channel 4. Again, a, a show which appeals to a, a, a younger demographic. Um, and I suppose in terms of attracting audiences in the long term, um, what's your view on how you reach that, that younger audience and, and how you continue to serve the, the ageing audience, which perhaps is the split between SVOD and traditional TV, and, and how that fits into your, your company strategy and your development strategy going forward? Because I imagine you have to have sort of a, a foot on, on every platform, so to speak, if you're going to make a success of the business. How, how will you mix your development going forward to reach younger viewers online or on SVOD and older viewers on traditional television? So I think, I mean, it's a very interesting question because um, nobody's yet proved a business model works on short form, uh, whether it's drama, high-end drama uh, on mobile. Um, and uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg is obviously launching a big new SVOD service to do just that. And it'll be very fascinating to see whether there really is something. I think for most writers, maybe European writers, um, they still like the thought that they're going to be able to tell a story over 60 minutes or whatever it may be. So to train your head into cutting, because he's, he's only looking for shows that run a maximum of 10 minutes at a go. So that, that creates a whole different narrative arc that I think you, we're going to have to get our heads around. Um, but to deliver really high quality deep, involving stories. I'm not sure sound bites. Uh, maybe I'm just too old. <laughs> Do you see that traditional television business going away in the next five to ten years, though? I mean, are you conscious of a change in the commercial structure of the business that means everybody has to change? Or don't you worry about it? No, I think for us as producers, what we have is technology is bringing us a new customer almost every other day. So working with new partners around the world is, is absolutely fascinating for us. I think uh, the traditional broadcasters obviously are under a huge amount of pressure from funding and all that kind of bit, and still needing and wanting to deliver high-end drama. 
Um, so I do think the co-production hasn't gone away. I can't believe that I started in this business in the 80s and it was still, it was a byword there and it's still now. Uh, but it's really about partnerships, isn't it, and how you put it all together. The S4 platforms have been very vocal recently about only wanting to take global rights. But for us, that has a kind of mixed message for us business model-wise. You know, do we become a very expensive work for hire? And you do get the rights back, so you don't lose it forever. Um, or, do, or do we piece together a couple of people who are interested parties and then sell it country by country. Yeah. I can't believe that we are out of time yeah. already. I'm going to ask one last question. Um, what, how will the business, how will your business be different within the next 12 months? And, and are there sort of moments down the year that are going to be significant game changers for you, either project driven or technology driven or partnership driven or acquisition driven? And what barriers are there in the way in the next 12 months to, that, that might stop you getting to where you want? I don't think anything will stop me in getting to what we want. Because <laughs> we're very determined to be the best that there is out there. I think technology has a much bigger role to play. And I guess having spent a lot of time at Sky, that you have a tech side there. Uh, AI is a whole interesting piece that we're only really harnessing at non-scripted at the moment. So who knows what scripted could be. Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, short but sweet, Sophie Turner-Lang. Thank you.